129. And did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. On today's program, we are going to be making a maple glazed pork tenderloin. We're going to make some sauteed red cabbage with bacon and caraway. My favorite way to have cabbage, bar none. And we're going to make a little small sweet potato casserole that could not be easier. We're going to get started on our pork tenderloin. Now, this is how pork tenderloin comes when you buy a package. There are two of them in there. Each one weighs about a pound or so. And if you'll look real closely on this side of the pork tenderloin, is what is called the silver skin. You have to trim that off uh, because it is inedible. It's tough. It's just cartilage that you can't eat. So have a boning knife or a little sharp, some kind of knife. This is a boning knife. And trim off that silver skin. The, the fibers, as you can see, all run that way. We want to trim all that off. Now, this little bit of fat, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the silver skin. And it actually, you can see real close right there, it looks silver. And that's what you want to trim away. Get as close as you can to the surface so you don't trim away your meat. Okay, that one looks pretty good. That little tail can come off. Pork tenderloin is one of my favorite cuts of meat because it's quick cooking. And it is just so lean and so delicious. I love it. Cooks in about 25 minutes in a 350 degree oven, which is where our oven is preheating to. It's 350 degrees. There's a little bit more silver skin under that, so let me get that off there. But it is a very lean cut of meat, so you want to make sure that you don't overcook it. it. It doesn't need to be cooked to death. A lot of people, that's the mistake they make with pork, and then they think it's dry and it's no good. Well, if you overcook it, it is. So you don't want to overcook these. These will cook in about 25 minutes, and I'll show you how to tell if they're done in just a second. I've got a skillet preheating here over like medium heat, medium high heat. I'm going to add a couple of teaspoons of, of, I'm just using canola oil here. You can use olive oil, you can use canola oil, you can use vegetable oil. Whatever you have on hand will be fine for this recipe. I want to salt and pepper with about a teaspoon of salt. Salt and pepper both sides of your pork tenderloin. This is such a versatile cut of meat. You can absolutely glaze it up in so many different ways. One of my favorites is just to use preserves that you buy that you put on your morning toast. Just some nice preserves. Melt it and brush any flavor really that you want. You can brush it over the pork tenderloin and it's fabulous. Makes this sauce that's just divine. Absolutely delicious. I like a lot of pepper. You use your own judgment as to what you like or don't like. Now, I'm gonna add these to my skillet, which is hot. You hear that sizzle? You want to hear that sizzle when you put your meat in your pan. I'm going to brown these for about just a couple minutes on each side. I just want to get that crispy uh, coating on the outside. Let me move this. We want to just get that the outside browned and, and add so much flavor before we put it in the oven. We're gonna finish cooking it in the oven, but we're gonna start it out on the skillet. Now, let's work on our glaze for our wonderful little tenderloin. In another bowl, you wanna add about half a cup of maple syrup. Now, I'm talking about real maple syrup, not breakfast syrup that you pour on your pancakes, although this is delicious on your pancakes. I'm talking about real maple syrup. Now, I'm just using the grade A dark amber, which is a little bit less expensive. It comes in grades, grades A and grade B. Just whatever you can find that is affordable. If you can't find or can't afford the maple syrup, this whole bottle is like $8 and it will last a very long time. Maybe you don't wanna use real maple syrup. You could, I guess, substitute the breakfast maple syrup, but it will not have the same flavor because believe it or not, 
the bottles of pancake syrup that you put on your pancakes or waffles or whatever you're eating has no maple syrup in it. It is just corn syrup that they flavor with different things. I want to use the real thing in this recipe. I'm going to use about a half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper because I like things hot. If you don't like it quite that hot, you can turn it, you know, tune it down to maybe an eighth of a teaspoon. I'm using about half a teaspoon or so of cinnamon. And then I have a fresh nutmeg here. And I'm going to use about an eighth of a teaspoon of freshly grated nutmeg. World of difference in pre-ground nutmeg and whole grain nutmeg. These little, this little seed pod, mm, smells wonderful, will last forever. So, you know, you can buy a couple of little nutmeg pods and be fine. Keep them and just use your microplane. You don't need to buy that fancy little nutmeg grater. Just use the tool you already have. Stir that together. Smells so good. And that's going to be our glaze that we're going to brush our tenderloins with. Let's turn these. Oh, you see that brown color? That's what you want. That brown equals flavor. And it's absolutely delicious. One of my favorite things to have is pork tenderloin because it is a quick cooking meal. This is a meal, this whole thing from start to finish, you could do when you get home from work at five o'clock and have dinner on the table no later than six o'clock and it, probably even a whole lot sooner. Um, so it's, it's one of those things you can make in the afternoon. You don't have to save this for the weekend when you've got more time to cook. You can cook this any day of the week and it will be delicious. Mm. This is a very lean cut of pork. Um, there's two tenderloins per package, like I said. So one, you know, I can easily eat half of a pork tenderloin, no problem. So this will feed about four. This recipe will feed about four people. Maybe with a little bit of leftovers, not much. Maybe just a little bit. Let's let those go for just another second. And we'll get those browned up. Now, I have my oven, like I said, preheated to 350 degrees. And I have got just a regular baking dish, a 9 by 13 baking dish, that I have lined with my new favorite tool in the kitchen. And that is the aluminum foil that is the release or the non-stick aluminum foil. I absolutely love that stuff. I use it on everything. Nothing sticks to it. It's wonderful. If you don't line your pan, you need to make sure that you use a non-stick oven safe skillet so that you can put that in the oven. Because that maple syrup, if I were to put that right straight into this glass baking dish, which is what I'm using, you would have a mess and a half to clean up. That's why I'm lining the foil so that it's just easy cleanup. When we take those pork tenderloins out, we just throw that away, wash the pot in two seconds and you're done. So make sure that when you do this recipe, you Either line your pan with some aluminum foil, and I like the non-stick kind, or that you use a non-stick skillet that is oven proof. Make sure that your skillet is oven proof. Not all skillets can go into the oven. Now this particular one can, but this is not a non-stick skillet. This is the hard anodized, and it cannot, you know, it, 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 the, the glaze will stick to this. I'm gonna brown my sides real quick. I'm going to take a quick break. I'm just going to brown up this tenderloin and get it in here. When I come back, I'll show you how to get this in the oven. I'll be right back with you in just a minute. Now, we've moved our tenderloins to our baking dish. And let's just add, just pour over. You can save a little bit of it if you want to, to glaze at the very end. Just pour your syrup mixture over them and turn them in that glaze that hits the bottom. 350 degree oven for about 25 minutes and they will be delicious. 
All right, now our pork tenderloins with our wonderful maple glaze are in the oven. We're gonna get started on the side dishes. Now in this small pan, I have got about half a cup or the equivalent of a stick of butter that I'm just melting to go in the topping that we're gonna put over top of our sweet potato casserole. Something I always do at home, if I'm making a sweet potato casserole, I just use the canned sweet potatoes. Now you could, if you wanted to, roast your own sweet potatoes and then cut them up into cubes or you can do what I do and just get the can. In this pot, I have two of the large cans because I really like a lot of sweet potato casserole and so does my husband. So I have um, two of the large cans of just the diced sweet potatoes. I drained one of them completely and then I left the juice in the other can in here. I've got that over uh, medium high heat. I'm just gonna bring this up to a simmer to warm them through and then we're gonna mash them. So let's get started on our topping to go with our, uh, on top of our sweet potatoes. I've got about a cup of just chopped up pecans. You could use walnuts, you could use almonds if you wanted to. I would probably toast the almonds first, but I'm just using what I had on hand, and that's pecans, which is typically what I do use on this casserole. Um, I've got half a cup of brown sugar, and remember, anytime you're measuring brown sugar, that you pack it into the measuring cup. Very, very important. And I have about half a cup of just all-purpose flour that I'm going to put in there. I'm going to stir this up together. If I can find a spoon. And then I'm going to add my butter. And that's going to be our topping for our wonderful sweet potatoes, which are mm, smelling so good. I love sweet potatoes. They're very healthy, full of beta carotene which helps you, it's delicious and good for you. I'm gonna add about half a teaspoon of kosher salt to that, cause salt brings out the flavor of about anything. Let's get our butter going. This dish can be served alongside anything. Now to me, pork, and sweet potatoes are a natural pairing, but you could also do this with ham, you could do this with a turkey, um, or chicken, roast chicken, any anything really that you wanted. This is the perfect little side dish for that. I'm just getting my butter to melt here. Let that go for just a second. While that's melting, I'm gonna make one of my other favorite side dishes. And this is probably my favorite way to have cabbage, which I love cabbage in any form. I love it raw, I love it cooked, I love it steamed. I don't like it boiled to death, I will say that. I'm not a real big fan of the real heavily boiled cabbage, but this is delicious. I have here one package of bacon, it's a pound package, and I want about half of it. And I'm gonna just slice that into um, little cubes. Let's check our butter here. I think we're about done. I just cut it in half and then run my knife through it. I've got a large skillet over here. Let's get that going on medium high heat. I probably should have stuck this in the freezer for about 10 minutes. It would be a little bit easier to slice, but that's okay. Anything to me with bacon, in it tastes good. Bacon makes everything taste good. I think my butter's done here. Just dicing this because I find it easier to cook if I do this beforehand. Put this bacon in your skillet, a nice big skillet because we've got a whole head of cabbage here. I love, now I'm using red cabbage today, which is my favorite, but you could do this very same recipe with green cabbage if you wanted to. It won't have quite the sweetness that the red cabbage has, but it would be delicious. Okay, now our butter's done. So let's turn that off and just add our melted butter to our topping ingredients for our sweet potato and stir that together. Delicious. Absolutely delicious. Love it. 
important that you get all that flour coated with that melted butter. That's the purpose of going ahead and mixing it up beforehand. Now, let me wipe my hands, stir my bacon, get that going. Mm. I love bacon, I love the smell of bacon. And our sweet potatoes are good to go. They're warm. That's all we're doing because these are already cooked. That is all we're doing is just simply warming those through. Now, let me grab my bowl. Move my cutting board out of the way here. I'll just flip him over. Wipe my counter in a minute because I don't want to put anything on that board that had that pork on there, the bacon. I've got just a little hand mixer here. I'm gonna pour these in this mixer. Be very careful, they're hot. You could, if you have a stainless steel pot, do it in your pot. I don't wanna get that mixer down in the pot of my, uh, or down in the bottom of this skillet or this pan. It's, it's just the, the anodized aluminum and I don't wanna, I don't wanna do that. So we're just gonna kinda beat these up a little bit. Get them st stirred in there. Whip them up. Now I've got some, a can of evaporated milk, but I wanna see where I'm at once I get these beat together to see if I need to add any more to it. Okay, now let's add a little bit of salt, about, I don't know, teaspoon or so of, of kosher salt. If you're using table salt, now let me explain, I always, exclusively on this program use kosher salt because I like the flavor of it better. But if you are using regular table salt, the iodized that you put in your salt shaker, you need to use half the amount of salt that I call for. You need to use half that amount because the crystals are smaller and it's a much, much saltier flavor. So if you're using table salt, use about half a teaspoon. I'm using kosher, so I'm using a whole teaspoon or so, do it to taste. Add a little bit of pepper, and there's my butter. I was like, where'd my butter go? Wanna add a little bit of butter to this, because hey, butter makes everything taste better, I think. Let's add a couple of tablespoons of butter. And let's mix all that in together. Now, if your sweet potatoes seem to be dry, you can add your evaporated milk or regular milk, but I don't think I'm gonna need it today. I'm gonna take a quick break. I'm just gonna beat this butter into the sweet potatoes. Every day is so wonderful And suddenly It's hard to breathe Would it be okay if I sat here? Is she serious? Whatever. New girl. Out. Pass it on. So don't you bring me a message down. from the foundation for a better life. Okay, people, you know the drill. Generosity. Pass it on. A message from the foundation for a better life. Welcome back. Now, all I did over the break was transfer the whipped sweet potatoes into my little small baking dish. And remember this wonderful little topping that we made. You want to dot this over the top. Makes it a little easier to smooth out if you've got it just in little small pieces all over. I like a lot of topping because that's just, oh. And sometimes you could if you wanted to. And I guarantee you if my husband were here, he would say do it. You could add some marshmallows to this, those little teeny marshmallows, like the last five or so minutes of baking, just to kind of give that little bit of a topping. He loves marshmallows on this, which I do too. But I didn't have any here today, so that's, we're not doing that. This is just gonna be a little crumb topping. Couldn't be easier. This would be a wonderful little dish to take to a potluck dinner 
or maybe you're having dinner at your church and you need to furnish something, there you go. Perfect little dish. Our bacon is crisped up. Oh, smells so good. Let me get this in the oven. It can roast alongside your pork tenderloin at 350 degrees. Just put it right in there alongside the pork, which smells and looks delicious, by the way. And let that go for about 20 minutes while your pork is finishing. Now, bacon's done, so let's get this out, the bacon out. Leave those drippings. Do not take that out of there. Leave all those drippings in there, because that's what we're going to saute our cabbage in. Mm. We were discussing, the camera crew here and I, does anything smell better than bacon cooking? We were trying to decide if anything smells better than bacon, and I don't know. I said, maybe bread, but I don't know. Bacon is just mm, all-time delicious flavor. All right, now, to those drippings, I have got one gorgeous head of red cabbage. And I promise you, I could eat probably half that myself. I love red cabbage. So this one's a big head, so I'm gonna cut him up a little bit so I can work with him. He's huge. You could use the green cabbage if you wanted, but I just like the red cabbage. You wanna cut it into, I don't know, shreds about however big you like. I like to know I'm eating cabbage, so I, I do mine in probably, you know, like maybe inch by half inch pieces. However you wanna do it is fine. It's not rocket science, it's just cutting up cabbage. You do wanna make sure though that your pieces are uniform, that they are the same size. That is important. As you cut, that's why it's important to work next to your stove. Be careful. Add your cabbage to your bacon drippings as you cut that up. You might wanna adjust your heat down. Mine's on like medium. But now that I've got my cabbage in there, I'm gonna turn it up just a little bit. It'll wilt down just a little bit. I know it looks like a lot, but it will wilt down. This is a huge head of cabbage, so I don't know if I'm gonna use it all or not. We'll see how much I end up with. Now, to core cabbage, cut it in half and then go in on an angle and cut out the core. And it's delicious. I love cabbage. It's so healthy, so full of vitamins and minerals and fiber and so delicious. I love it. I'm recipe testing at home. I tried this recipe. We're gonna do it on the program in a couple of weeks for a cabbage slaw that's a sweet and sour cabbage slaw that, oh, so good. And I thought about, with that recipe, using some red cabbage in there too, and just for color and beauty. And, and red cabbage, to me, tastes a little sweeter than regular green cabbage. And I think that's probably gonna be enough. And that stain will clean up off your board. Don't worry about that, that will come off. Okay, let's stir that all together. Mmm, oh, how I wish you could smell this. You wanna coat every little piece of that cabbage with those bacon drippings. Mmm. Definitely a southern thing, isn't it? Cooking with bacon drippings. I literally, in my refrigerator, have this little tub, this little metal canister that I keep my bacon drippings in because I cook with them all the time. I love them. Add so much flavor to everything you cook. Add some salt. This is a lot of cabbage. So I'm gonna add about probably a tablespoon of salt. Now, this is what makes this mm, pop. These are little caraway seeds. If you can see the shots of the caraway in your hand, they're little teeny seeds. Uh, if you've ever had Jewish rye bread, this is the flavoring that's in Jewish rye bread. It's called caraway. I like caraway. Now, it's a stronger flavored herb, seed, I guess. Um, this would be a spice because it's a seed. Herbs are leaves, spices are seeds. And because I like it so much, I'm adding a couple of tablespoons of the caraway. You might want to start, if you've never had it, 
take one and just chew it. Just get, well, I've used them all. Just get one and pop it in your mouth and taste it and see if you like it. Delicious. And I'm gonna add a couple of tablespoons of just red wine vinegar. A couple of glugs of it. Adds flavor and just, mmm, absolutely delicious. I love cabbage cooked this way. And of course, lots of freshly ground pepper. Get all that stirred up. Cov turn your heat down just a little bit. Leave the bacon alone, don't eat it. Cover that, let that go for about 15 minutes while your pork finishes and then we'll wrap all this up and the best part, we'll get to eat it. All right, now our pork tenderloins are done. It's very important that you let meat rest before you slice into it so that the juices will just get back into the meat. So while that's resting another minute, let's finish up our cabbage. And I've been sampling and it's delicious. Remember the bacon we took out? You wanna add all that bacon and those wonderful little drippings back into your wonderful cabbage. Don't cook your cabbage to death. Leave a little bit of crispness in there. That's why most people think they don't like cabbage is because it's been boiled to death. Leave it, you know, 15 minutes is plenty enough for this to be delicious. So let's get up a good serving of that. Oh, I can't wait to eat that. And our wonderful casserole, our little sweet potato casserole that is so good. So let's get out some of that on our plate with that beautiful little crisp topping on top. And our pork. Let's slice a little bit of our pork here. Oh, look how good. Absolutely perfectly cooked. Moist, tender, 